thing if I got a um, rug or something you lay down here so when you. Yep. And action. All right, what's up guys? Rigging the boat right now. Hunter said this is the best intro, so welcome to another episode of doing stuff I should probably pay somebody to do. We are rigging the boat right now. New trolling motor. This trolling right here has got some daggum hours on it. This is the motor guy Tour. This is not the Tour Pro. It's a regular cable drive, super strong trolling motor. It's gonna be my spare throughout the year, so if anything goes wrong, if I break the trolling motor, anything happens, I always carry a spare trolling motor. I think everybody on Tour does. So, I'm gonna put the new motor guy Tour Pro on, which I think is laying right over there. And if you can see around, I've got three Dakota Lithium. We got a lot of stuff. Big batteries. I've got two more Humbird Helix. Helix this, I got a H12 and a Helix 10. The 12s will go to the console with my existing 12. The 10s will go to the front for my Homebird 360. And then I've got the Garmin in the back, which will also go to the front with the live scope and pan optics. So, gonna be cool. New batteries. I have, obviously, if I can find it, laid up here somewhere, have the new PowerPole Charge right there. Absolute monster. You cannot fish without the PowerPole Charge. As many days of years I fish because things are gonna happen and that thing will bail you out. It bailed me out last year, so. Decided to get the stuff on here, get the boat rigged, and then go fishing with it and play with all this stuff before we head to St. John's for the Bassmaster Elite Series. So, this video right here is with me rigging this stuff up. First things first, pulling the trolling motor off, taking my old mounts and stuff off, and put it all back together. Let's go. This is probably going to be a 10 minute video, which is going to take us like nine hours to film. It's going to take us uh, 18 phone calls to Joby. So, three coffees, four hours, and a couple of arguments later. Yep. We got this. We got it. Set up right here. We got all the wires ran from here to the back. Everything's good to be pretty much put in now. All, now it's just all about install, which is kind of a little bit easier whenever you've already kind of got the path, you know, the groundwork laid out. So this sucker right here, they're on. Solid. They pretty dead gun solid. I don't even have everything tightened up yet, and there's almost nothing that can go wrong. Pretty phenomenal. This is the print this is the precision sonar dual console mount. You can actually adjust these a little bit, so I'm gonna actually take these and slide them in as close as I can possibly get them where I can still fit the covers on both units. So we're about to slide these in probably about inch and a half, two inches, and that'll be it. It'll be all good. So finish buttoning these up. I've got all the wires ran to right here, so I have power to them, and that's it. We'll have a side imaging unit. A little bit different. A map unit, so it'll be good. This year, so the main reason I wanted two units. Last year I had to switch, I used the map a ton. Whenever I'm running around looking for new places or anything that looks good on the map. I use the map a ton. I want to have a full screen of the map at all times and I want to have a full screen of side imaging at all times just so that whenever I'm practicing or in a tournament I'll always have the ability to possibly drive over something and see something that can make a difference in a tournament. So I'm going to leave this unit right here on side imaging almost all the time and I'm going to leave this unit right here on the map almost all the time. And that's going to be the setup for 2021 at the console. So let's squeeze these in, make everything a little more compact and we'll be good to go. We'll start rigging the front. So this is the precision sonar. Also got another cool thing. I'm gonna show y'all me putting them. Actually a screen protector is a tempered glass screen protector, just like the one you use on your very expensive iPhone. These units are extremely expensive as well. So I'm gonna put actually a screen protector, tempered glass screen protector on all of these units. So show y'all me doing that too. But first let's button these things up a little bit and get everything exactly how I want it. So let's do it. So I have a question. Go ahead. So for the people out there that we're so proud of you last year for not having any front electronics <laughs> on pretty much ever. What do you have to say to them? Like, are you going to be using this stuff or why did you decide to do this? Do you think you have more of a competitive advantage with them? So the main reason I want to do this is because I'm hopefully going to have an extremely long career in this sport and I didn't get any of this stuff for free. I had to pay for every single thing I'm putting on my boat. So I felt like it was a good investment in me to be able to have all this stuff and kind of learn a little bit more about the way that fish move, the way that fish act. I'll have forward-facing sonar. I'll have the Humbird 360, which is forward-facing 3D sonar. I'll have all the side images stuff here. So I'll probably always have two units at the console for the rest of my life. But I just felt like it was a good investment right now, early on in my career, while I'm still trying to learn, I'm still fishing a ton of days a year. It's good for me to have all this stuff at my fingertips so that I can go out there and try to learn as much as I possibly can in this next year. And hopefully some of those things I learn will last me a lifetime. So it's an investment in my future, really, that I went ahead and, and you know bought all this stuff and bit the bullet, paid the extra money, and I went ahead and bought it so I can learn as much as I possibly can in this upcoming season. So 
that's the main reason I did it is for learning purposes, seriously. And I'm gonna show you all a lot about what I'm doing. I know all the other pros have said that. They're gonna show you all these comparison videos and stuff like that, and that's great. But I'm gonna show you all exactly the way that I do it, and I'm gonna show you what I do and how I learn and how I'm implementing this stuff because I unsponsored. always- Unsponsored. Do what? Unsponsored. Yeah, unsponsored. I always do things a little bit differently than everybody else. So I'm gonna show you all how I implement the things that I learn in my day-to-day -day fishing stuff. So that's the plan. So let's finish rigging. Hooking this up to the Sea Clear power harness right now. I'm hooking all the negatives in to this main negative wire. You can do this as long as you have a inline fuse going to every single graph. So I'm running three graphs off the same power wire, off the same positive. So all three of them are going to have a 5 amp inline fuse going to each graph. So two Hummingbird Helixes and then one Garmin already has one built in, I guess. So that's what we're doing up front. About to put this last precision sonar mount on and we'll be done. We'll give y'all an update, give y'all a rundown of how everything's set up in just probably an hour and a half or so. Kyle, Man. what you got? We got us three units right here right now. We got two Hummingbird Helix 10s, a Garmin. I don't know what it's called. It's a 10 inch. We'll have the live scope on it. So we ready to go. This is pretty cool. Like I, This is the first mount I've really seen like this. This is the precision sonar console, I mean bow mount that holds three units. So the bottom two is like this and then the top one is stacked. So I guess this will be like in line just like the console one is and the top one is right on top of it. So I'm not going to rely on these super much. I'm going to still be doing a lot of casting, skipping dots, skipping bushes, stuff like that, a lot of flipping. So I wanted these to be as low as possible where I still got a ton of room on both sides and this was the best mount I found where I could get that, you know, accessibility of still being able to fish and use a lot of the surface area of my boat and still be able to hold three graphs. So I've got everything I need up here for the 360 live scope and I'll still have a unit just for the Hummingbird Lake Master because I feel like the Hummingbird, even though I'm not sponsored by them at all, the Lake Master is something you cannot go without, especially down here in the south because, you know, like Hummingbird is based out of Lake follow. So a lot of lakes that I fish, the Lake Master is extremely detail oriented, whereas some of the other maps are not quite as much. So I have to have the Lake Master mapping and we're set up, ready to go. These things are pretty cool the way it turned out with this precision sonar mount. It's, I'm really, really excited about it. So and how can you get that mount? precisionsonar.com and I'm gonna show y'all one more thing we actually have I told you earlier screen protectors for my graphs just like what you put on a phone literally glass screen protectors that precision sonar also sent me to put on for this year just in case I am up here flipping an ounce and a half weight and I bust my screen right in the face with a two ounce tungsten or one ounce tungsten that tempered glass will actually protect it a little bit so got some of those in the truck actually they're laying right there about to put a couple of them on for y'all so it's rigged pretty much trolling motor works New lithium batteries in, power pole charges in. I'm gonna show y'all that in a second. We're about to open everything up on the boat, let y'all take a look at it. So, pretty cool, pretty cool. Tough install right now. We are putting on a screen protector for a Humbird Helix 12 right now. It's pretty cool. Never seen these before. Went online to order some precision sonar mounts. I've seen these and was like, I better just go ahead and get those just in case I do something dumb throughout the year. I have a tendency of doing dumb stuff. Cause you never have these fancy, all these fancy screens. I got more than I've ever had. So hopefully you guys at home will have cleaner hands than I personally have right now when putting these things on. But it's pretty simple. Just gotta peel off the back. Line it up down here at the bottom the way I'm gonna do it cause it's already mounted. And just squeegee it on up. Just like you do a phone case. A phone screen protector, I mean. Look at that cascading uppers like that. You see it sucking to it? Mm -hmm. It's easy, man. Cool. Very, very easy. That was awesome. These are the ones I've got right here. Graph glass, survive the elements. Pretty cool. Got these from Precision Sonar. That's who makes it. But it's, it's completely, it's like a different, newer thing they're doing called graph glass. Really cool product. Expressly for my front units where I'm gonna be casting a lot, those are gonna be the ones that have the, you know, the most potential of getting broken. So that's the one I really need to make sure that I have the screen protector on. This one back here is gonna be pretty protected, but just in case if I get a coing or something throughout the year that might bust it, now I've got one, you know, some extra protection. The ones up front are mandatory though. I feel like I have to get those done. So got it all taken care of. Case back on. So. Down here, the one that I have, 
I have a big size 31 interstate battery. This is actually a battery that was designed for like 18 wheeler or tractor trailers, the big rigs. This, this battery was designed to be a cranking battery for them, but then allow them to run their like air conditioner and, st and you know stuff like that all night long without having to crank their battery. So this is a good battery to have in your boat if you wanna run a bunch of grass on it and try to run on just one. I'm gonna test it for a little while and if I have to, I'm gonna get a second battery. But then we've got the three trolling motor batteries. They're all 12 volt, 100 amp hour Dakota lithiums hooked into a 36 volt system. I've got the power pull charge. You can see right here, a brand new one in here charging these this 36 volt system and my cranking battery that thing bailed me out it'll that's the charger i'm going to use got my spare prop and that's pretty much how everything is rigged up in the back you can see right here i have my sea clear harness the one they you know i, I showed you all the video on gunnersville the guys putting one in my, my boat and now you can see i'm still using it to this day everything's working flawlessly it would have took me way longer today to rig this boat up without that sea clear power harness like seriously it was so easy to just tie and get the power you know in every single different stop that i had to make so like seriously it was a very easy way for me to load to rig this boat with that sea clear power harness and i'm not gonna have any voltage dropped in any of my units so definitely a crucial piece i'll have that in my boat forever at least until i see something bad with it because i have not seen anything wrong at all it's been awesome so far so got everything rigged up ready to rock and roll so that's it taking my old batteries out nothing but lithiums and, and one really good agm battery that should be perfect for this job so towards the front, gotta put one more graph glass on, and then we're done, we're good to go. But the cleanup, I blew stuff up today. Got a, got a good buddy of mine, actually the first guy that ever took me fishing to all these different lakes right here. He let me come to his shop, that's where I'm at today. I got out of the rain, I took every single tool he had and strode it around his shop, but that's let's what take, friends are for. Let's take a look at what's going on here. <laughs> that's what our friends are for right Oh there. my gosh. So I, I pretty much looks like I blew it up in here. But Look at all this stuff. We're going to have some cleanup time, and then we'll be done. We're ready to go fishing tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'll be fishing all day and building rods all night. So that's the plan until we go to Florida. So Now we just need boat wrap, and we're ready. Boat wrap, build some rods. Build some rods. Ready. Let's do it.